Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well and today we're going to talk about why I think the stock market is confused. Now you might be thinking how does the stock market get confused but I'm sort of seeing something here that I think uh, that is Wall Street are confused about, I think analysts are confused about and there's a little bit of a change going on and a strange movements in stock prices and I'll show you what I think today and uh, what I think is kind of going on and what might end up happening in the stock market. But as always, this is kind of just predicting the short term. So obviously take it with a pinch of salt as a long-term investor, we're not too bothered about the short term, but it's something that I can kind of see happening right now. And maybe something that carries on for maybe a couple of weeks, a couple of months uh, going forward. But like I say, it's just something I noticed and I thought, you know what, I'll share it, share with you guys, see what you guys think. Uh, but yeah, this is just something in particular that I'm noticing going on, uh, especially that this last week on the, this week of earnings when we've got a lot of companies reporting there are, Companies that are probably more tech based, a lot more smaller market cap based and have been on good share price runs and have not been that much affected by the uh, CV situation that we've had. Uh, so we'll just run through a few of these companies. Now these are all companies that actually reported last night. A lot of these companies that reported last night were down huge amounts. Now what you will notice is some of these companies are now starting to recover a fair bit and some of them are still doing uh, pretty bad so uh, we'll, we'll take a look at them. So Fastly, Fastly reported last night, um, once again they came out with numbers, uh, there, there seems like a few management product problems going on here with Fastly uh, at the moment and um, if you look at the share price it is down a, a huge amount and this one, this is one that has dropped you know a, a huge amount since it's 52 week highs so there is a massive correction already gone on with this one. But uh, once again, what you're starting to see here is you are starting to see a little bit of recovery in the share price. This, this stock was down, um, I think, over 20% at one point, and now it's only down 6%. So pe people, buyers, are still coming in to buy this company. So it's not as bad as what it was. So you're seeing buyers come into this one, and uh, this is definitely a, a massive beating down company. Win Resorts, Win Resorts, their earnings came out. I actually saw uh, Win Resorts uh, numbers actually come through my phone. My first reaction was like, oh my, they are really good numbers. Uh, and it was one that I was actually considering buying in the last few days, but I've just got so much on my plate already that I didn't end up buying, but it was definitely a, a really good buy. If you can buy this at like that $90 range, uh, I was considering it. I've made good money off win results before, but I've already got enough at the moment to be buying. So I didn't open up a new position, but if I was, very cash heavy. This is definitely one I would have considered the last few days, but their numbers were amazing. Stock kind of like, uh, originally when these numbers came out, it popped and then it actually went down a fair bit after these earnings and this stock were down four or 5%. What's happened today? Buyers have come into this company. We look at Fiverr. Fiverr brought numbers out, their stock down 23%. It's pretty much been down 23% since the numbers have come out. No buyers are fancying Fiverr. If you look at Uber, Uber is a company that their earnings came out. These guys were down, I think like 8% or something. And once again, buyers have come in. You know, this was negative on the day. Buyers have come in uh, and the stock's gone up and uh, we're up a fair bit on this company. Now, if you look at Etsy, Etsy once again, uh, they reported the numbers. Buyers have come in through the day. This was down, I believe, like 20% at one point, And we're only down 6% now. So this has gone up 14% really uh, from uh, last night, from the after hours. So there's a lot of buyers coming to these companies. Uh, same with Roku. Uh, this one was down a huge amount. And uh, buyers have come into this one once again. Now, all these companies that I'd said just then, you know, we talk about companies that have been on good runs, that have been small market caps, that have not really been affected by the CV situation, and their valuations have gone up a fair bit. Now, just for example, if we just compare two of these companies right here, which is Fiverr, which is a company that is still losing money, definitely benefited from the whole work at home situation, and it has been on a, on a, a little bit of a drop here, as you can see, um, it did have a bit of a peak, but still, it's still. On, if you look at the run here that it's been on, it's still been on a very good. You know, we talk four hundred and twenty percent there. So it's not a small amount at all. But it's, it's still, it has pulled back a lot, but it's still massively high from where it was in the CV situation. Now you look at Etsy. Etsy for me, I think Fiverr had this one situation that has massively helped it. Uh, you know, everyone kind of worked at home, or oh, I need to get more work, what can I use Fiverr? You look at a company like Etsy, Etsy for me is a company that, um, their numbers were actually really strong. Um, sure, the guidance was a little bit weak, but you know, the revenue growth was still good, EPS was still growth. And it's not a bad valuation, you know, Etsy sitting at a 55p ratio, in my opinion, is still pretty cheap. And um, sure, these guys have gone on a really good run, 
but the P ratio is still very cheap on Etsy and I think Etsy is going to be a very good company in the long term. Um, I don't own it, but on that massive drop, I would not have blamed you for you know buying into Etsy. Now, if you look at the difference of these companies, buyers have come in for Etsy. You look at a company like Fiverr, no buyers have come in for uh, Fiverr today. Now, what's the difference between these two companies? They've both been on good runs. They've both benefited from the, the uh, CV situation. Um, I would argue that Etsy will probably be the better long, uh, longer company better company in the long run but if I just um, and sorry about this uh, I just um, let's just pretend that it's not there I'm not paying for the full version of my charts <laughs> I looked at it I think it's like 400 400 a month 500 a month which is crazy um, so yeah I, it's more than what I earn on YouTube for doing these videos so I'm, I'm not paying for it so just pretend we've got the full version here and I'm not trying to sneak the free version or uh, just kind of uh, get past this anyway but if you look at um fiverr for example this this valuation is still sky high like this is a 26 price to sales ratio if you look you know fiverr's normally traded in this sort of range down here you know this is probably um if we did if we paid for it it would be a lot clearer but it's probably like a, a seven uh seven price to sales ratio right now you look at etsy's price to sales ratio they're at 12 and short is probably a little bit higher than what they normally do to be fair but this isn't ridiculous you know you look at you know 20 2019 it's been roughly around 12, sure, you could argue it's probably 10, 9. Um, but it's, since about 2018, Etsy's always had this sort of fair va this fair valuation. So Etsy's kind of not too badly valued. You look at Fiverr, Fiverr looks still massively crazy overvalued and it has been on a good run. So what's the difference? Well, it looks like people have looked at Etsy and gone, you know what, Etsy on a 20% drop, it's a great company in the long run and it's not too badly valued. And people have come in and bought this dip. I think a few people are looking at Fiverr and Fiverr is um, on a massive dip, but no one came in for this one because people are looking at this one going, yeah, it's on a massive dip, but it's still not, you know, it's still crazy overvalued and it's still got a lot of CV numbers in there and it, that one's kind of cooling down where people and analysts and Wall Street are kind of looking into uh, Etsy and thinking this is a great company long term and it's not too badly valued, especially compared to like, you know, historic sort of value. And, this, and going back to another company that reported earlier this week that kind of, once again, these guys got beaten down after their earnings, uh, you know, on um, Monday or Tuesday, um, you know, went on the open. These guys got absolutely smashed and the company dropped 7%. What's happened since earnings for Corsair? We're up a little bit. I don't want to shout it too loud, but we're, we're up a bit and we're actually recovered now. And I think people looked at Corsair going, you know what, sure, it's got hard numbers to beat. It's had a good CV situation, but people are looking going, you know what, this company's still paying off debt. It's got very good products coming out. It's an 18p ratio. It's going to be a good company for the long term. And people came in to buy this dip. And I think the big thing that is happening right now in the stock market and why I made this video about saying that I think the stock market is is confused is because it's looking at a lot of these situations right here and a lot of these stocks that are the small market caps that have done well in CV they've gone up a little bit revenue's gone up a little bit I think a lot of Wall Street and uh, Wall Street and analysts are kind of confused look at this now and, go, and trying to work out and are a little bit confused about which opportunities are the best ones to buy I think they're looking at a lot of these companies and saying okay realistically which of these companies are still putting in good numbers and not uh, fair valuations and you can actually make really good money in the long term and I think they're looking at companies like Corsair and you know only a few days ago they were selling this company off a huge amount and now they're buying it all back again and this is what I mean by, about the confused they're actually looking and going oh yeah it's not doing that well and then they actually look at the situation and go actually this is actually a really good dip to buy and then within the next five days people have come in and bought it same with Etsy you know a, a kind of like a not even a 24 hour period you know this company got massively sold off and the people looking at Etsy going oh actually you know what Etsy is a really good company in the long term let's go buy it back again and I think there's some buyers coming in here looking at a lot of these companies and thinking these are really good companies in the long term why are we selling these we should be buying these and I think there's a little bit of confusion at the moment and this is probably why the, these sort of small market cap companies and these growth stocks haven't maybe gone that f done that well so far this year is because Wall Street and analysts are confused about um sure a lot of these co these stocks have gone up in share price a lot of the valuations have gone up as well but in the long, in the next kind of one year, two year, three year, a lot of these companies are not too badly priced for what they're going to do in the future, and maybe it's time to start buying them. And I think there's, a, I think Wall Street at the moment and analysts are kind of trying to work the way through a lot of these companies and going, okay, maybe um, Fiverr, for example, is still benefited from the CV, CV situation, but maybe that one is still 
you know, crazy, overvalued and needs to come down a little bit at the moment. And maybe they're looking at a situation like Etsy, which has, you know, been selling off or a Corsair that's been selling off and they've gone, have gone, hold on, we keep selling this company, but realistically, it's still going to be pretty good in the long term for this company. So should we really start buying this one now? And I think there's a little bit of a, like I said, well, I guess the title really, a confusion about which ones are still needing to come down in value uh, and which ones have kind of, because a lot of these companies have massively sold off and which ones are kind of sold off now and they're actually kind of looking at going, actually, you know what, we maybe should start buying that one. And we've had a whole stock market for, especially these kind of small market cap growth stock companies that benefited in this sort of CV situation. You know, a lot of these companies had have basically flatlined or, you know, gone down basically a little bit over the last kind of six months. And if you own any of these companies or you have a whole portfolio of them, you would have noticed this. And I think it's kind of at the moment now where we're, we're kind of at the correction phase where Wall Street and analysts are kind of trying to still work out which ones are still the ones that need to come down a little bit and which ones they're looking at, maybe a Corsair, for example, where they're starting to see that little dip now and thinking maybe 18 PE, still not changing the the, the uh, forecast, still looking good on the growth front, maybe looking and thinking, you know what? We probably should start buying this. And I think this is kind of what's going on in the stock market. I mean, the thing is, you don't know how long this is going to, kind of going to go on for. Maybe it's a, you know, a couple of weeks, maybe it's a couple of months, maybe it's the rest of the year. But it does look like Wall Street is getting a bit confused about which ones to sell and which ones to buy because some of them are selling off a huge amount and the buyers are coming straight away. And some of them, the, the stocks are dropping huge and they're still in the buyers coming in. And I kind of see that going on right now. And we'll see if it kind of carries on playing like that, playing it out like that in the kind of next few days, next few weeks, next few months, how long it goes on for this kind of bouncing around this volatility. We'll kind of see what goes on. But it is kind of interesting to see some of these stocks now that just after earnings, absolutely smashed beaten down and then the buyers start to creep back in again so yeah these you know there's not just selling going on there's a little bit of buying going on and we'll see how it plays out but yeah i don't like i say i don't worry about it too much short term but i do like to just keep an eye on what's kind of going on and that's kind of uh you know my thoughts um as a long-term investor i'm not too bothered about it because like i say a lot of the companies i'm in personally i'm confident they'll do well in the long term but i do like to see what's going on short term and that's maybe something to consider and my kind of thoughts at the moment so let me know what you think in the comment section below but as always if you could hit the like button that'd be absolutely amazing uh, and i'll see you next video